one specific question about why you never show adults. They are too boring, too complicated, because kids, they seem to be very free here. They have no problem. Sometimes it's the adult that create issues. Of course, I wanted to create a world where they're free. Uh, and lots of things that happen in the film that came from themselves. Like the whole scene in the kitchen, in the, in the script says, they dye their hair, stop. So they started like improvising for 25 minutes and all these amazing things starts happening. And I'm really fascinated with kids and I'm really fascinated with older people, like especially women over 60. So my film is usually about oh, yeah. kids or women over 50. So I'm not very interested in, in early adulthood. But, but, you know, that was just, we just wanted to create a world where they're free and they can be themselves. And, you know, kids talk very differently when they're just among themselves, you know? And we, I was just there trying to catch with the camera. No, does, the, does the beetroot uh, work, so? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was the scene. It works. It, the beetroot, we tried. It w actually works, yes. Yeah. It doesn't last. I, I know Lolo uh, has been presented in a lot of um, movie festivals. <laughs> What, what are the reaction? Because I, I have to be sincere with you. I'm quite surprised when you said uh, we've seen a lot of movies about that. Maybe I'm from a different generation, but I'm really glad to watch that kind of movie with these uh, themes, uh, with this kind of uh, irony. But uh, let me say is one of the first I mean, when I say there's lots of movies about coming out, like the suffering of like, oh, I'm, I'm gay and, you know, I'm still finding my way out in the world. But like, as you said, like films like that, where the kids are really aware of who they are and what they want in life, that's, you know, I don't, I haven't seen that in cinema very much, very often. So that's why I wanted to create that. How are their reactions? Uh, the kids, uh, they have seen in a small screen. But actually, uh, we've been selected for a big, massive festival in Berlin in a week time. So they're very excited, and the whole school, because they all go to school together. So they all, you know, the girl is from, from, is from one year above. So they're actually gonna have the premiere they've been waiting for for a year, and the whole school bought all 400 tickets in the cinema, so they're taking the whole school to see them. So they're very, very excited, yeah. But it, but it was not easy to work with them, though. You know, you, it, it's hard work, you know, especially the kissing scene. That's interesting that he say it was hard work because the way he talks, it looks like that the whole world is fine. There is no problem at all, right? Uh, just, one, just one specific question about the movie. There is the last scene where they go to the party and they all dress up. And when you see the reaction of the other kids, seems to be that the problem is for the other kids and not for them. Yeah, the film, it, it's, you know, it, it, it's about acceptance and about you know, the power of friendship and the power of like, realizing who you are and sticking to your guts, you know? And we actually asked them, uh, what do you think the, 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 what it means, the last scene? And they're like, oh, it just means that your friends is more important than a boyfriend. I was like, yes, good, that's, you know, you, you, you understood it right. Well, uh, let's talk about uh, Anbessa. It's a completely different movie, completely different uh, genre. <laughs> I, I, if you have to put it in, in a genre, how, how would you define this? Is it because it's a kind of documentary, but it tells a story. How do you define uh, this document, this movie? Sorry, I, it's hard to put it in one word, right? Because it's a documentary that reads as if it's fiction. I mean, he's so animated. I would say animated documentary. I don't know. Um, yeah, he's a, a very unique boy, unique situation. So it, it's hard to put in one one term, one one category. Did you have a script? No, this is all just a camera following a young boy's imagination and journey. And I know shooting a documentary, there's one rule that is uh, like ma make the camera disappear. And in this case, I, I can, working with the, with the, the kid, uh, I seem, seems to be more complicated, but the camera really disappeared. So I'm wondering how did you produce it? So how long did you take to make all the, um, the filming, uh, to make confident him confident with the camera? Uh, how many people were on the set uh, filming? So I'm very curious about it. 
Um, well, Mo, the director, she's really great at blending in. Again, this was a one camera. So normally I'm a director, but uh, I've worked with Mo many times and she's a dear friend and I honor and respect her work. So I decided to kind of come on as a producer. We worked on a film together where I directed and she was one of my camera uh, women. And again, this is a all, ca all women crew this film and the other film that we've made as so a women crew purposely. So when you have, I mean, you don't need a, a production to tell a story. I think there's a misconception of like, you need uh, 50 sound and the camera all over. No, it's a specific subject. Uh, again, these are people who are not used to having cameras on their face. So you have to be as, uh, you shrink yourself. And that's the, I think the art of making documentary, right? Being a fly on the wall and how do you do that is, you know, the reason why I came on as a producer on this film, I really believed in the story. Um, and I also believed on Mo, she spent a lot of time with me in Ethiopia. We met many years ago in the village of Ethiopia. Um, so understanding the culture, understanding how people move how children are, because children are so playful, they feel energy. And uh, the more playful you are, the more they gravitate towards you. The more you not try to confine their environment, the more free they are. So um, there was no script, there's no casting, it's just capturing Asalif's life. If, I can, if, that, if that answers any of the question. How much there is about your personal experience you're talking about environment. How much did it change your country since you were a little girl to now? <laughs> um, drastically, I think uh, our world is changing so much. And uh, progress is a very interesting word for me. Uh, as cities progress, what does that mean for indigenous people? for people who are pastoralists who live off the land? And what does that also mean progress in general? You know, if, because cities are growing, technology is advancing. Does that really mean there's progress for everyone? So that made me question. And I was pregnant with my son when this film was being shot. So as a mother, I have a different perspective now. As a woman, as a different perspective than I was a little girl. So of course, uh, the expansion of cities worldwide changes how we look at our natural resources, our natural way of life, uh, whether it's uh, what climate change has done, what us as humans, as we call it, human conditions have done to the land and each other. So there are certain genre of people that become invisible because they don't belong in this progressive world. So it's changed drastically. The director is originally Italian. She lives in America. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, she's American Italian, Moscarpelli. Mm -hmm. Mosca. uh, she's moving her production to Rome, which I'm very happy about, and she can learn some Italian as well. <laughs> when I saw this movie, it reminded me a lot the Neuralist time, maybe more than Neuralist Pasolini when Pasolini used to describe the suburban area of Roma and using young kids, very poetic, very dramatic story. Do you have, when have you done, when you decide to make this movie, do you choose any movie as a reference, especially from the Italian Neuralist time? Do you have any particular? Um. Visual, Reference. yes, I mean, I think most artists draw from our experiences, what we've seen, and uh, for me, personal speaking, uh, visual metaphors of Ethiopia have been very dangerous because uh, it's oftentimes, uh, it's images of poverty, images of starving children. You don't really get to uh, witness the whole picture. It's always been a single story told from one perspective, right? And that's one of the reasons was why I wanted to be a filmmaker. Uh, the power of, like, I mean, like you said, making Lolo, 
You know, it's your personal story. No one else can tell that story but you because you lived it. So, you know, for me, having the experience of both worlds, understanding how the West and the East works, um, the power of the person telling the story, right? Um, I think either Ethiopia is only described as an ancient historic place or the people are starving. That's been the two narratives that are very quite common. Um, so it, it was not a healthy uh, understanding of cinema in my country for me. So I needed to create, I needed to show in my films, both in Ambessa and all the other documentaries I've made, is that there is many stories within one country. There's many stories of life, it's not just one. And children are the best, the most honest describers. Their facial expression does not lie. So uh, it's, a, it's a complex uh, way of thinking for me. Uh, I would like to, sorry, I would wait, like to wait, talk wait. about Azali, if he's uh, his real name. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, he became an engineer uh, in, in the meanwhile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, he has a great talent, not, not, not only in front of the camera, but uh, as an electrician. And other. Uh, when did you shoot the movie? Uh, are you still in touch with him? Do you know? Okay, tell something about him. I'm, I'm really curious to know uh, what and happened after well. that. Yes. Uh, I mean, the backstory is really long, but... Uh, he, as you see, he's like this farm boy trapped in this like genius body. And he doesn't even know it, you know. We didn't even know he was a genius until all of this story started to kind of open like onion. And he's in school and the, the, our production team had made sure that, you know, they're part of the displaced uh, area. As you can tell, they don't even feel comfortable being there because they're so used to... Um, you know, in the beginning, the mother was describing, don't forget our palm tree, don't forget our papaya, don't forget the water dam we created. So their, their lush green environment has been removed. So he's kind of, as a boy, you see him kind of fighting this hormonal change that's happening in his body where he used to be this little boy playing with his mom. And then he gets to like these little uh, confrontations with the city boys because he can't fit in with them. And then him discovering his own talent and putting all these broken electronic parts and building lights and intercepting things and radios, all the radio he, you hear is him intercepting. And uh, he's in school. <laughs> I mean, it's just, uh, he's a brilliant boy, he's in school now, and of course we are in touch with him. Again, Mo and I are so close to the, the story, and uh, it's part of the, the thing, I think, um, why I think this kind of festival is so important, because you are bringing the stories directly from the source, which I appreciate, you know, like uh, knowing that Priscilla cannot put this a journey together for all of us to be here telling our stories from our own country, from our own perspective is so powerful. And to meet each other and say, ah, okay, I'm not the only nation that feels this way. I'm not the only filmmaker from a small part of the world with a bigger dream. And uh, there's power in being, having direct lineage to the source. Why do you, do you choose for the boy to play the lion to escape his problem, you know, to use his creativity? Or was the boy suggesting, I'm a lion? No, he, he introduced himself as Ambessa, which is a lion. And in Ethiopia, the, the metaphor of a lion is uh, a lion is like the most powerful thing in the world, our flag had a lion, the lion of Judah, we are known for black lions. So uh, the lion is a big uh, symbol of like the most powerful. So what beats an a hyena in a boy's mind is a lion. So you hear the hyenas at night and he becomes a lion who beats and chases away these hyenas. So again, it's like a, this beautiful, you know, uh, imagination of a boy. Bye.
hello is saying keep on saying like this with a hat why you keep on <laughs> you're amused i can see you uh this is not the first time that i saw the film i saw the film at the berlinale this year and I loved the first time and I was really happy to be in the program with you. And you touched on something that's very important, which is representation in cinema, in media. Uh, you know, the unknown is very frightening. So that's why we need these stories at the foreground, because the more you see it, the more you get used to it. So we need more filmmakers uh, outside, you know, the Europe and the US. We need more filmmakers from Asia, from Africa, from the global south to be represented. We need a, ki a gay kids story, a trans kids story, disabled kids stories, black kids stories, so people can see more and see that, you know, actually we're not so different. What's missing is representation, you know? So that's very important and thank you so much for the festival for the opportunity. One question that I wanted to ask is, these issues for both of you, is it localized? And if it is localized, how do you intend to influence policies? Like, do you, in terms of Ethiopia, if you have rights for children and do you involve the government, the local communities, mm -hmm. to be able to involve the rights of the children and to influence you know, programs and planning to other different organizations or different mm -hmm. locations, as well as also in Brazil or in Germany. Amazing. Please. And, uh, okay. Uh, that's such a, a, like, brilliant question because you don't often get that from festivals. It's often about the story and how is the country like? They ask you to do not be political. Yes, and again, the, like this film is not political. I, I, I'm, I believe in social change more than political change, uh, which ripples into political change after. But uh, a little, like for me, uh, the reasons why I get involved in films like this or make films uh, have sort of the real story narratives of people and children. Uh, uh, my f background is uh, I started building girls schools and I realized that the girls weren't coming to school because uh, many factors of tradition and uh, resources of water, so on. So the more you research, you understand there are many layers. And then also that led me to understand the power of the going directly to the villages versus government level or higher government level. So my way is more grassroots. Uh, I believe in um, going to directly to the women's association. Every village in Ethiopia has one. Every sub-district has one. Uh, whether it is uh, going house to house, door to door, that for me, that's more of the effective change. Uh, I believe in... Uh, making sure that the young people have voice. So how do you know uh, a society is working well? You talk to the young people. Like simply walking around the cities and the villages, you will hear the echoes of how life is for young people. So uh, I, I like going directly to the source. And it is. Yes, well, for me, it's been my journey since 2007. Uh, that's been something I made a promise for myself that if, we, if I need to go village to village, I mean, I have about 80 something schools all around Ethiopia, uh, different districts and different uh, regions, and uh, most of them has a very similar issue. And when we think about so-called third world countries, we just generalize and say it's poverty and you throw aid at it. That's not what's happening. There's many factors. Whatever you're doing is really applaudable. So oh, whatever you, you learn from your, the, the, the community that you're doing, mm -hmm. and then you can be able to disseminate your, your findings yeah. th through this conference as well. Yes, I mean, that's and the goal. Yeah. And um, you know, whenever I'm traveling and I meet other UN officials and UNICEF officials, especially when I know they are of a descent like places like myself. Right? There's a certain understanding of the journey 
for example, I, I know uh, Miss Priscilla, I shouldn't even, I should be using your last name, not your first name, yeah. respectfully. Um, Priscilla Dele. Priscilla Dele. It's just, um, I know a woman from, you know, I hate to use the throw word, underdeveloped countries understand what underdeveloped countries need. So if I'm a director telling stories about certain genres I've experienced, I'm able to touch people who come from there directly. So if I'm working on a project and if I'm sitting uh, you know, next to a woman who understands what that place feels and looks like, I have a better chance of getting policies changed than, uh, I'm sorry to say, I can shout and scream in New York uh, next to women who come from the first world. It's just a different understanding a different struggle, a different way of reaching certain policies. I know I'm an Ethiopian woman who grew up in a village and I understand what that felt like to be a girl from a village. So my goal is to change that so the drive becomes different. And also my drive is not that I live in the West, I know better, but what can I learn from you that I can help you better the situation? Because again, sometimes our philosophies from the West is not going to work in those places. Traditions, religion, way of life is so different that I learn from them. I cannot take what I know and implement it directly. It's just a, a different way of ping pong. Again, I, I talk too much. Please, please go. Not at all. Talk more, please. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to listen. Uh, I'm based in Germany at the moment because I go to German film school. Uh, I've never made uh, that many films in Brazil because I've never been that supported. So, and filmmaking is a very expensive uh, play box, for to say. But I was just very, very happy when I got the news that Lola was actually going to screen in Brazil in a festival. And but then the curators uh, sent me an email saying, hey, I'm really sorry to tell you, but actually we decided to rescreen Lolo at 11 p.m. in the evening for adults. Uh, my co-director, Leandro, uh, he's in Brazil at the moment after fighting 90 years to get his feature film funded. He eventually got the money and then he had to fly back in December. But eventually, uh, you know that uh, in the 1st of January, we got a new president and he scraped all the funding for films that uh, talks about feminism, indigenous people, black people, uh, and the LGBT community. And he's now stranded in Brazil. So the thing with the film, uh, what I want to say is uh, human rights is never a commodity. You can never think that, okay, we've got that covered. No, you know, they can come very quickly and take that away from you. So that's why cinema, festivals, uh, it's very important uh, to keep us fighting, keep us going, because you, know, you can never take uh, human rights for granted. Thank you so much. Um, my question, though, it's a um, kind of political question. The sense that, uh, I mean, this is, I know that this is not a political movie, and I really appreciate that. But it touches a very important political issue nowadays in Ethiopia, right? So it is um, something really hot. So I was wondering how the movie was perceived in the country and whether it was actually even possible to, um, to show. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, we haven't screened it in Ethiopia yet. It's still making rounds. Uh, we've been very fortunate in uh, being, you know, we opened in Berlin and it's been all over. It's going to show on Arte. France and Germany in November, um, so it, it's been really well received in you know in around the world. But we have yet to screen it in Ethiopia. Uh, to answer your question about whether this film touches a political issue or not, you know, uh, true art reflects the time, and it's it reflected the time then and now, uh, which the reality is. Uh, uh, there is a uh, need for voices to be heard from all, all around Ethiopia. Young people feel like they, they need a better future. Um, but again, that, you know, I live in New York, I feel the same way. Um, 
So it's a universal uh, movement, a universal issue of wanting to feel valid and your dreams are valid and your basic human right is valid. So uh, I think true art will constantly reflect its time and it should. If not, then what's the point? I hope that answered your question. Just would like to remember this is the Italian premiere of uh, Anbessa. So thanks for <laughs> letting us to have this privilege. I would like to thank, thank you for these two wonderful, very different uh, pieces of art, uh, for bringing two different things, very important in uh, different, uh, uh, different ideas. <laughs>